Today on Juice TV, we'll be meeting soccer sensation Mac Miller. Hey guys, I'm Mac and I'm looking forward to hanging out with you guys today. We'll be finding out how to make rockets with our scientist, Dr. Rob. And we'll meet a friendly face from around the hospital. Hey guys, I'm Kyle, and we've got a really fun show today. But for now, it's time for 10 Quick Questions with Kyle. I'm 11 years old. My favourite sport is soccer and I play goalkeeper. My favourite movie character is Alex Ryder from the movie Stormbreaker. My favourite animal is the bearded dragon because they're lots of fun to play with and when, you, when they're young they're really funny in the cage. The grossest food that I've ever had is zucchini. I'm really good at swimming but not so much at breaststroke. If I could travel anywhere, I would go to the Netherlands to see where my dad was born and see what he had when he grew up. If I could have any superpower, I would want it to be mind reading. If there was anyone I could meet, it would be Jamie Winkup that drives in the V8. If I could represent Australia in any sport, it would be soccer because it is my favourite game. Now that you know a little bit more about me, we'd like to know more about you. So get in touch and let us know what you'd like to see on Juice TV. All right, troopers, let's celebrate Australia Day. It's time to get into some Aussie cooking with Joy and John. Hey guys, I'm John Lazarou from The Coffee Club and we're here at the Lady Salento Children's Hospital and to keep in with the Australia Day celebrations, we're going to be doing some great Australian recipes for you. This is my chef today, Joy, <laughs> and I'm working under her supervision. Joy, what are we cooking today? We're cooking lamingtons and damper. Lamingtons and damper? Yeah. Have you ever made them before? Yes. Oh, good answer. <laughs> OK, let's get started. John, what are the ingredients? Well, our ingredients today for damper, our dry ingredients is half a teaspoon of salt and three cups of self-raising flour. And our wet ingredients are three tablespoons of butter, half a cup of milk and a cup of tap water. That's our ingredients. Very simple. Five ingredients, nothing else. But the fun starts when you have to mix everything up and I'm really looking forward to that, Joy. <laughs> let's do this. If you pass me that sieve, we're going to just pop it on there and what we need to do is just sieve. Now you know how to do that, don't you? Good girl. And our salt. Wow, you are messy in the kitchen, aren't you? Yeah, I am. <laughs> Here, let me show you a little secret. Something I learned when I was an apprentice many, many years ago. You just tap it on, your, on the palm of your hand and it all goes down nice and neat. See? And all we've got left is our salt. Okay, here, the fun begins. Our teaspoons of butter. <laughs> Now's the messy part, right John? Yep, your hands actually have to go in there and mix it all up. Oh, <laughs> it's so gooey. Feels gooey? Oh, yeah. The good gooey, right? Yeah, okay. looks good. Yeah, now we've got now to turn that time. into my turn? Yeah. Right. I'll take over from you. So what we've got to do is just squeeze that butter and the flour together so that we end up with the consistency of like breadcrumbs. You know what breadcrumbs look like? Yeah. yeah. So see how it's all coming together now? Mm-hmm. That's it looks what good. we're after. Now very soon I'm gonna ask you to grab the milk and the water. And we have to start adding that in slowly now. Excuse me, John. Sure. So we're all just right. adding it with little bits. Little bit, little bit at a time, yeah. That's the water. Let me mix that up. Okay, and again. 
It's really important not to throw it in all at once so that you get a, a good consistency. It's a really simple recipe, isn't it? Oh, very. It's only five ingredients. <laughs> and again, a little bit more joy. I'm doing all the hard work here, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> It's looking good. Okay, my chef reckons it's looking good, it must be. All right, John, this dough looks pretty good. Let's start kneading it into shape on the cutting board. Sounds like a plan. All right. Your turn. It feels very sticky. <laughs> sticky? Okay, now it's getting into the right shape. We are getting there. Okay, Joy, that's looking really good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use a knife. So as with uh, any normal kitchen circumstances, if you're using a knife or the cooktop or the oven, you always need parent supervision, correct? I thought so. So all I'm going to do is just make simple markings so that when this cooks, it's going to be like perforated and that is ready to go on your um, baking tray. And it just makes it easier when, when the damp is cooked that everybody can just grab a piece. And that's the whole idea of damping. So that's ready to go in the oven. What do we cook this at? Okay, the preheated oven is at 200 degrees. And then we put it into, we turn it down after 10 minutes to 170 degrees. And then we bake it for a further 20 minutes. So that's a total of baking time of half an hour. Okay. Pretty easy, huh? Yeah. Let's do it. And here's one we prepared earlier. <laughs> wow! What a difference to the one that we put in the oven a little while ago. That looks great. Now damper is, like I said to you about the perforation, all you need to do is just break it off like that. And damper, just open it up. Jam, butter, cream, very simple. That's the way I would go. Sounds delicious. Now it's time to make some lamingtons. Lamingtons? Let's go. Okay, the table's set, ready to make lemon tins. And I was very clever and I made John bake the sponge cake before he came. John! John! Yes, you were very clever and so should you be. You should always get the adults to take care of the um, cooking procedures and the knives and all that sort of stuff in the kitchen. But yes, we made it, have our traditional sponge cake here ready for our lamington. So do you want to know how I made it? Yes. <laughs> I thought you might. So what we've got is just flour, sugar, milk, eggs and butter. Traditional sponge cake. And then again, I've already sliced it in half. So again, you should get your parents or an adult to do that. Okay, it's time for the icing. All right, let's get this out of the way. So the ingredients that we need for the icing is obviously the icing sugar, the cocoa powder, the butter and the water. So now all we do is mix everything together and make sure the icing sugar is sifted. We did that earlier, hey? Yeah. Good. That looks great, doesn't it? That yep. looks so luscious. Not bad, Joy. <laughs> okay, now we're going over to the um, our, our sponge. So I've cut it in half, and like I said earlier, always get an adult to use the knife. Very important. So we've got our strawberry jam, and we just very generously pour this, because this has to bind the two sponges together. It's got to actually stick it, right? It'll even make it sweeter too. Yum, strawberry jam, chocolate, sponge, what more could you ask for? Okay, so that gets put on there. And now we're gonna cut it. We're gonna make six out of this size. Now it's time to put them in the icing. Platter, please. Demanding, aren't you? <laughs> All right. So, there's our first one. You know what to do from here, Joy. Yeah, just get it. This is the nice, messy part. <laughs> oh, how good does that look? <laughs> Hurry up, I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> and then dunk them into the coconut. And then place them on the tray. There we go. Well, that was our uh, attempt at making lamingtons and damper today. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. We did, didn't we? Yep. And I think we did a pretty good job too, Joy. Yep. There's only one thing left to do. What's that? Taste test. All right. Mmm, <laughs> the 
that's good. Hi everyone, I'm Hayden. I'm eight. That cooking looks delicious. Now it's time for guess who. Do you know which animal belongs to these feet? Here are some hints. Keeping in the Aussie theme, it's an Australian animal that can't run backwards. It's an emu. Emus are the tallest bird in Australia and can reach two meters in height and weigh a whopping 45 kilograms. That's a lot for those skinny legs to hold. But their feet are made for walking and running with three toes and a tough pad underneath, which helps them get a good grip when moving at up to 50 kilometers per hour. Wow, that's fast. Emus are usually brown and their feathers are double shafted. This means that they have an open structure which helps insulate the emu against the elements, whether it's hot or cold. While the emu may have lots of shaggy feathers, their wings are actually too small to allow them to fly. Well, I think it's fair to say that while these guys roam throughout Australia in almost all habitat types, they sure know how to strut their stuff. Hello everybody, I'm Grace and now it's time for us to get into some soccer. Introduce TV. Thanks so much for having me. My pleasure. Look, all these people were very excited to see you here today, doing your thing with the soccer ball. But tell us, let's go back to the very beginning. You've been doing some really amazing things all around the world, and it all started with soccer. What's the story? Yeah, well, um, I've always enjoyed playing soccer. Um, and one day I saw kids from Afghanistan on TV, and it didn't look like they had anything to play with. And I guess I love playing soccer. I think that all kids should have the opportunity to play soccer too. And that's really when I had the idea to help kids all over the world experience the game that I love. That is really cool, very inspiring indeed. So what you've actually done is lots of fundraising to get soccer balls into these countries, right? Yeah, yeah, so I've got a website, macmiller.com, uh, where people often go to my website and they donate. You know, every donation counts and it all goes to United Nations Association of Australia and then they help me to buy my soccer balls. And then you get people like the Defence Force to even deliver the soccer balls for you? Yeah, yeah, we are extremely grateful to the, uh, the Honourable Stephen Smith, uh, Minister for Defence, uh, because we wrote a letter to him asking if the Australian soldiers would help us to take over 100 soccer balls to the kids of Afghanistan. And he wrote back saying that the Australian soldiers will take over 100 soccer balls to the town of Tarancot in Afghanistan. And you have also got to travel to some pretty amazing places yourself, haven't you? Yeah, definitely. I uh, just recently I was, uh, went to India uh, to do a speaking tour. I spoke to around 31 schools, 10,000 students. And, you know, everywhere I went, people would want to shake my hands. And, you know, I tried to shake as many hands as I could. But trust me, there are a lot of people in India. Guys, can we please get a round of applause for Mac? Yeah, he's not only really good at soccer, but he's also a really good bloke. And you're going to hang around with us on Juice for the rest of the show? Oh, yeah. For sure. Now I hear we have a very special delivery to do upstairs. Shall we do that first? Let's go. Hey Mark, my mum was telling me that you enjoy playing fo football? Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Well, I just thought I'd swing by and uh, give you this one. Well, thank you. So do you have any favourite sports other than soccer? Yeah, I'll play rugby league. Oh yeah, that's cool. Do you have a favourite soccer team? Yeah, when I was little I just loved soccer. Oh yeah, same here. Stick around. Coming up, Mac will be giving us some of his top soccer tips. But now it's time for Cartoon Dave. Hey there, guys. I'm Cartoon Dave, and today I want to show you how we can turn a normal nerdy pencil into an exciting cartoon character pencil. So all you're going to need is something to draw with, a hunk of paper, and to follow me over to the whiteboard. OK, first thing we're going to do is draw some nice straight lines. We're going to go like this and go... Straight line there and a straight line there. And look, they're kind of wobbly, but that's going to be OK. And now we can add a straight line across here too. And then we're going to do some bendy lines like this. Let's go bendy, 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 bendy. Kind of like that. And then a bit of a pointy thing. So it's starting to look a little bit like a pencil. And if we had another bendy thing going like that, colour, 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 colour. 
All we need now are a couple of straight lines down the middle, and this is pretty much a pencil. But it's not the world's most exciting pencil. It's still looking a little bit nerdy. So if we want to make it a bit more cartoony, all we need to do is add some eyes first of all. So let's just clear a bit of a space here. And these are the coolest and simplest cartoon eyes on the planet. We're going to go circle whoosh, with a dot and a circle with a dot. Dump -de -dump -dump -dump. And just by doing that, straight away, this starts to look a little bit more cartoony, which is kind of cool. But then we can add things like this. We can go bendy shape. Whoosh. And so now it's a pencil with eyes and a mouth. And now it's got a whole lot of personality. But it doesn't end there. We can add extra stuff. Look, bendy lines to make little teeth which is very exciting. And if you want to keep it just like that, that's a whole little character. He's looking kind of good, but we can keep adding more. So if it's your drawing, you get to decide when it's finished. So let's add, why don't we add, uh, oh look, let's go with some arms. Straight line and some bendy things. Woohoo! Here's another bendy line and some bendy things. And he has beautiful little arms. And should we do a hairstyle? Let's get a hairstyle on there. Let's do, oh, let's make him a serious pencil. Get this. Let's go bendy shape, straight line, straight line, bendy shape. Straight line, straight line, straight line. And look, angry eyebrows. And now he's a serious punk mohawk looking pencil, which is kind of cool as well. So this little guy, he went from being a normal basic pencil into this character here. Can I show you one more thing? Have a look at this. What if we take these eyes here and just change them ever so slightly and go straight line, bendy thing and a dot and straight line, bendy thing and a dot like that. Dom, da, dom, dom, dom. Looking pretty serious. And one final mouth. Let's go for something completely different. Let's do a bendy line here and bendy thing there and a bendy thing there and go, hello, a beautiful lady pencil. So there we go, lots of things we can do. We can take a hairstyle, we can change it again and again and again. But the nice thing is, if it's your drawing, you totally get to decide how much you want to draw, how much you want to change it and exactly what you want to do with it. So until next time, I'm Cartoon Dave. Keep scribbling and I'll see you here again. Thanks, Cartoon Dave. Now it's time for some science. G'day, guys. It's Dr. Rob here. And today's experiment is all about rockets. That's right. I'm going to teach you how to make a rocket. <laughs> this doesn't really look like the sort of stuff that NASA has, though, does it? No. This, this is, in fact, a film canister. It used to be what films came in. You can still get a hold of them in some places. And this is what we're going to make our rocket into. It's basically just a tiny container with a little snap shut lid. First ingredient in our rockets is, well, just a little bit of water. Let's, let's make two rockets. There we go. The second ingredient is an Alka-Seltzer tablet. Now these are basically just little tablets you can get from the supermarket and they fizz when they go into water. So we're gonna pop them in and put the lids on and then get back. All right, lids on and they're bubbling. And now we wait. Whoa. That's why you wear the eye protection. Now these rockets are, well, they're pretty cool, but wouldn't it be nice if they could be a bit bigger? Time to make some bigger rockets. <laughs> For our bigger rocket, we'll be using some of science's best friends. Uh, that would be bicarb and vinegar, or dilute acetic acid and sodium hydrogen bicarbonate, if you're playing at home. Now, whenever these guys get together, there's always a massive reaction, mostly sort of foam and, and bubbles. And it's gonna be those bubbles, or the carbon dioxide, that power our rocket. Speaking of the rocket, here it is. I know it looks like a water bottle, but it's got a little pop top, just like the film canister. And that's gonna be what we shoot up to, well, I don't know how far really, but let's give it a go. Step one, the vinegar goes into the bottle. Now this can make quite a mess, this experiment. So do it outside and make sure your parents know what you're up to and where you're doing it. How much vinegar? Well, I don't know really. It's not a very precise science. It's not rockets, it is rocket science. Say about that much. The next step, you've got to work pretty quickly. You've got to get the bicarb in, get in a little container or a spoon. You've got to get that in quickly, and then get the lid on quickly and turn the whole thing upside down. So, here goes. Bicarb in. Fizzing has started. Close it up as quick as I can. And come on. Whoa, there it goes. But where do we... Over there. Excellent. Now I just need somebody to clean up this mess. Mum. Anyone? Hi, my name is Preston, and it's time to meet Nurse Maddie. Hey, Preston, how are you going? Good. Did you eat all your lunch? 
Oh uh, yeah. Yeah? Cool. I'm just going to do some obs. Is that alright? Yep. Awesome. Manny, I've got a few questions for you. Sure. What is your job here? So my job is to be a registered nurse, which means that I do all sorts of things like checking blood pressures and doing temperatures and giving out all your medications and your tablets, baths and showers, changing your sheets, all that sort of fun stuff. What is a normal day like for you? So in the morning it starts out really busy and we're running around doing lots of things like checking everyone's blood pressures and their temperatures and then we give out lots of medications and your antibiotics that go through your arm but then in the afternoon it settles down a bit so we can help change your sheets and do all that sort of stuff. Yeah my tablets are pretty quick actually because I only have to have three different kinds of tablets. Yeah only a few for you. What do you love about your job? Um, my favourite thing about my job is meeting lots of cool kids like you. Yeah, because I'm pretty cool. Yeah. You are very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very cool. What is your favourite food? My favourite food is chocolate. Mine too. Yum. <laughs> favourite movie character? My favourite movie character is Elsa from Frozen. Who's yours? But from us, The Simpsons movie. He's pretty good, hey? Yeah. If you, you could have a superpower, what would it be? I would like to have the superpower of being invisible, I think. What about you, Preston? I would like to have every single power in the world. <laughs> uh, if you could travel anywhere in the world, where would it be? Um, I'd really like to go to America one day. I'd I'd like never been to there go before. to Disney World. Oh, me too. Do you have any sports or hobbies? Um, when I'm not at work, I like to play netball and touch football. I Do like, you like any sports? I like to play Oztag and in a school soccer sport. Oh, very cool. Cool. Well, I'll go and write that stuff down and then I'll write your obs down and you just buzz me if you need anything. Yep. You've got your buzzer? Yep. Put that there. Mm -hmm. You can press that if you need me. Okay. All right. Cool. See ya. <laughs> Do you want to be a part of Juice TV? To see how you can be on the show, head to juicetv.com.au for all the details and to see when we're filming at the hospital. Plus, by keeping an eye out on our Facebook page, you can also be in the running to win lots of cool prizes. Juice TV. Hey guys, my name's Mac Miller and I've been hanging out with you guys today on Juice and I'm going to show you a few cool tricks. Okay guys, passing is a crucial part of the beautiful game and I'm going to walk you through it. So when you're passing, you want to get your non-striking foot right next to the ball. And with your striking foot, you use the inside of your foot to strike through the ball. So here I go, non-striking foot, inside of my foot and follow through. One more time. Non-striking foot, inside of my foot, follow through. Now, for the tricky stuff. This is gonna be a 1v1 move called the step over. Now, the step over can be used when you're in a tight situation, when defenders are closing in on you and you need to get out into open space. Now, this is a great trick that you can use to really throw your defender off his natural position. So, what you do is you use, well, in my case, I use my weaker foot, my left foot. I put my foot around the ball I drop my left shoulder and then I take away with my right foot. Juggling is a great technique because it helps you to gain ball control and ball awareness. Now what you do is when you begin, you can start doing what is called kangaroo kicks. That's where you kick it up, let it bounce, kick it up again. 
As you get more advanced, you can try and do it without a bounce. And then once you think you're ready, you can try alternating feet. When you're juggling, you have to make sure to use the top of your foot. This is because it's the most flat area of your foot which gives you maximum control. Been busy. Oh, yeah, how's it all been going? Good. I mean, you've got so many fans, some <laughs> autographs, photos. Who would have thought? But you're just in time. We need to read some mail. Our mailbox here on the level two info desk. We love receiving your mail. It's been overflowing, so we've got some really cool pictures to show. You can give me a hand. Look at that beautiful masterpiece oh, there, wow. Matt. So this is from Eleanor, and mm -hmm. she's even told us what it is. It's a horse and a chicken on a tin. There's that. There's a chicken on the tin. Beautiful house in the hills. Cherries or apples in the tree. Delightful. <laughs> This one here is from Zach. Great stuff. Look at that cute little character. I'm on Juice TV. Juice TV is awesome. <laughs> we like you, Zach. Good job. Oh, you can do that one, Mac. Look at that. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Nice and colourful. What's that, Abigail? Beautiful. Nice work, Abigail. Oh, look, it's even got a leprechaun and a pot of gold. <laughs> rainbow, oh, wow. beautiful stuff. Another rainbow. Oh, my goodness. This one is from Alex. Thank you. He's Alex. a little, little snowman. He hasn't gone a leprechaun. He's gone the snowman. <laughs> Love your work, Alex. And last but not least, this, Mac, we have this, this one. James. James. Looks like a very farmyard sort of thing it this week, eh? It does. The farmer tending to his crops. Great stuff, guys. But Mac, you are our special guest for today. So guess what? You have the really tough job of deciding who is oh. the letter of the week. Pip, I can tell you I'm, I'm feeling the pressure, but I do think that it's going to have to go to Abigail. Very well Very deserved. Beautiful. Well done, Abigail. Here is your prizes. We've got a drink bottle, Alexander and the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day, but you won't have one of those with this drink bottle. <laughs> we have a Big Hero 6 t-shirt, tickets to the movie, a notebook, sticker pack, pencil case, oh, more stickers and the Hot Gromit Surf Star and Challenge. So well done. You know what, Pip? I actually might even throw in a copy of my book. Oh, I think that would be a great idea. Magic stuff. Thank you so much, guys, for all your mail. Remember, Level 2 Info Desk is our mailbox, or you can email us, hello at juicetv.com.au. Tell us what you want to see on the show. But, Mac, that's it. It's been a big episode, hasn't it? One so fast. You're probably going to have more fans waiting for you around the corner, so we should probably say goodbye. See you on the next show, guys. See you, guys.